Welcome to the Career Ready Podcast. Learn about resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn, interviewing, and all the things you need to be career ready with the Career Services Center at College of DuPage. I'm one of your hosts, Rebecca Harrington. In today's episode, we are discussing how to end the year strong to enter the new year ready for the job search. Later in today's episode, I'm going to talk about utilizing and updating LinkedIn. And I'm another one of your hosts, Pierre Michaels. Later, I will provide some tips to prepare for future interviews, and I will end the episode with this week's question submitted to our listener mailbag at careerpodcast at cod.edu about job seeking in the holiday season. But first, you'll hear from our other host, Michelle Malik. Thanks, Pierre. I'm going to start our episode today with some information about using the end of the year to reflect and update your resume. So you're heading into the new year and it's that time again to update your resume. It can be easy to get swept up in the holiday season and before you know it, you're already back at work or you're starting a new opportunity. Where did the time go? (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's important to update your resume consistently because you've probably done some really great things this year and you don't want to forget about them. So I want you to think about a few things. Um, what new tasks or skills can you add to your resume to update a current experience? So maybe there's a project that you had to take on. Um, Did you learn a new program, a new software? Definitely add that to your resume. Also, um, if you're starting a new experience after the new year, be sure to add that to your resume as well and ask yourself, where does this opportunity or experience best fit on my resume? Um, And you can continue to revise that section as you become more familiar within your role, too. You can also ask yourself, did I volunteer this year? Did I take a new class? What about a degree or certificate? Did I earn something like that? So make sure to update not only your experiences, but also the dates within your education section and for the positions that you've worked. That's really important. And lastly, um, think about if there's something on your resume that can be removed at this point. So maybe there's an experience that's 15 plus years old, or maybe you have an experience that you can't quite elaborate on anymore. So feel free to remove those. Um, But basically, the message here is update your resume sooner rather than later because the information will be fresh in your mind. So happy editing. (laughs) I will say, uh, as you're reading all of that, I was like, yeah, I need to do that. (laughs) Me oh, too. Should do that too. Well, it's the end of the year for us all to do it. I know, right? But it started. It really did make me start thinking. Okay, what have I been doing this mm-hmm. year in my role? And like, yeah, I better update that because this is what I tell students all the time too. Is when you do a cool project in a class, or you are involved in like a, a pro, like a big event or something update because you won't remember like we always think like oh this was so great I'll never forget what I did (laughs) but you will you'll I mean you you'll remember that it happened potentially but you won't remember like all the things you did (laughs) as part of it so I I, yeah it's a it's a good thing I was gonna say I'm guilty of this too (laughs) (laughs) I started last year in career services and it is still not on my resume so I will be taking my own advice (laughs) yeah and I know we'll get into this later with LinkedIn Mm -hmm. but you know update LinkedIn I put the podcast on LinkedIn did you guys oh no I I was going to (laughs) But I haven't yet. So, but no, but I also, it also needs to go on the resume too. I mean, it's, and it's something to think about, you know, maybe you're not looking for a new job right now, but it's still a good idea to do it because again, eventually you might be, and that doesn't mean you're leaving your company. It could just mean that you're asking for promotion, um, you know, uh, or or just, you know, maybe be getting involved in a volunteer opportunity. Sometimes they do want a resume. Mm -hmm. So just having it updated means less stress when that opportunity comes uh, and you don't even, you may not even be looking for it. Mm -hmm. So even though we're talking about how we haven't done this yet, (laughs) uh, I want to make sure that we're spending some time thinking about not just documenting it, Right. Because, yes, it's really important to put it on the resume, to put it on LinkedIn, as we'll get into, but just to um, spend some time to reflect on it and make sure that we are fully remembering how we were involved and the stories that go along with it. Like, not just that we did it, but how were we doing it? Because we want to be preparing for the interviews as well. Mm-hmm. 
And when we go into those interviews, we want to have stories. We don't want to just say, I did this. We want to be talking about that involvement to really help us best stand out when we're in that interview. But to be reflecting on these could also be really helpful if we are caught in a moment where we get to network and talk about these things. Mm -hmm. Or even to write a better cover letter, right? Cover letters really need stories in them. So to be thinking about this, processing this will help us in all these different phases. And to help us go through this process, I want to revisit this idea that I brought up before. Uh, it's a common thing I bring up when I'm talking about interviewing, and it's the Venn diagram. All right, we use this Venn diagram to help us process what we want to be sharing. On one side, we have that employer and the knowledge or the understanding of that desired field. And then on the other side, we have our self-awareness. And we want to include our skills, our abilities, the experiences, the achievements, all those different things that we've been doing and that we can offer the employer. And then those two create that, ni that nice natural center of what the employer desires and that value we have to offer. So as we're doing this uh, at the end of the year, we're reflecting, we're thinking about these stories that we want to put in to a conversation that we want to be updating on resume or LinkedIn. We need to reflect on that past year and see how that center has grown. So just to think about how you've evolved over the last year can be a great starting point to get into some of these conversations, some of these stories. So think about the skills and abilities that you've developed or enhanced. You want to think about these different gaps that you've closed. Maybe you realized with this Venn diagram before that, oh, this is something I need to get into the center. Well, have you been able to do that? Can you talk about that? Or maybe there were some weaknesses that you noticed and you've been working on them. And now you can talk about how you've overcome them, how you've minimized them. Maybe there's these new experiences that you identified for the resume. Now we're thinking about those stories that go along with it. How were we involved? Where was our growth through that process? And what achievements uh, can we now talk about? What can we be saying that we were able to do? And this could be from these professional settings, but academically or even personal. Because in that interview or those networking cover letter situations, we don't have to stay strictly professional. You know, we want to be talking about the best things that will appeal to that employer. So simply put, how have you been involved and how can you be a better professional as you move forward? As you go through this reflection, you will not only evaluate how you have grown, you will also bring some of these things to the forefront of your mind. The best way to have interview success is to prepare. And as we enter a new year, this is a great time to prepare stories you want to share with employers. I think this is a great point because employers always are going to be more interested in what you've done recently, mm -hmm. no matter what. I mean, it, you may have done this amazing thing five years ago, and it's great to maybe have on your resume that you did that amazing thing. But in a personal setting, a networking situation, it matters that you just did something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it right. matters to, to more to hear about what you're what you're doing in the moment than necessarily something that you did a while ago. Yeah. I also had a thought too. This is great for interviews, but it's also great for you as a professional, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have reviews every year. Oh my gosh, Michelle, you, know? you just blew my mind with that. That's so great. <laughs> right. So it's like, you know, even if you're not applying for a new opportunity, you could still ask yourself those questions because you can bring that information back to your manager, your supervisor, and that's all great things to, to think about. Yeah. And as a student too, I think um, when it comes time to um, reflect on, you know, what you've learned that year, um, even if it's uh, for when you're in an internship, even when you're already at work, you know, to be able to have those conversations with the people you're working with to impress them, you know, is not, they'll see the, what you're doing at work, but to be able to, to talk about the successes you've had in, uh, in school, whether that's like in a class with a project or um, at your side job or in a student club, to be able to talk about those things like in conversation, I think is huge. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. All right. So uh, thank you. Michelle and Pierre, for those, uh, I'm going to talk about our resource of the day and also kind of our third piece of this year end uh, setup, um, which is LinkedIn. Um, uh, so 
the end of the year can be a great time to use this resource to update this resource. Uh, LinkedIn is the professional social media. So <laughs> sometimes people will say it's the Facebook, professional Facebook, I guess is the way to think about it. You know, if you look at it, it actually kind of looks like Facebook. So I'm just kind of describing this in case someone doesn't have it. You know, it's got a news feed. It has um, your page, which is a bit more involved than on Facebook, because this time you're going to put basically kind of your, your resume, but even more on there. And then the other big piece of LinkedIn is connections. So actually connecting with other professionals professionals that you've met before or just have a similar background to you. Um, so you've got a good network. Um, if you need help creating um, a LinkedIn We've got um, a lot of information through our department um, that you can access. So you can attend one of our webinars on LinkedIn. Anyone, everyone is invited. Just go to our website, cod.edu slash career services and click on webinars and you'll see the schedule. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure we'll also talk about more, you know, when it comes to creating and, and making the most of LinkedIn in the future. Um, today, though, I wanted to focus on the year end part of LinkedIn. So assuming you have one, <laughs> right, you want to update your LinkedIn profile, just like you did your resume. The end of the year is a great time to keep things up to date. So some things to think about your photo. Ooh, when was the last time you had an updated headshot? <laughs> or maybe you just put something on there to kind of get your profile created. This is the time to revisit that. It should be a headshot, not a full body shot. It shouldn't be just like a picture of you on vacation where you cropped out the other people. <laughs> <laughs> right. We want something where we're dressed somewhat professionally, at least, uh, and, you know, have somewhat of a plain background behind you. So even if it's like a friend taking the photo for you at home, um, I think you can still do it and kind of update it. Um, your summary which is kind of the, um, actually really your summary and your headline. So these are the first things that an employer sees when they see you or someone that's a pot potential connection. So uh, if you got a new job, that should be there. <laughs> if you learned a new skill, that should be there, right? If you uh, kind of like Pierre was talking about with your growth, right? So how did you grow this year? What weaknesses did you overcome that you can talk about like, kind of again, what you, how you've improved. Um, so those are really good places to add those. Um, take a look at your current experience entry. So similar to what Michelle talked about with your resume, you know, in your current job, what are the things we can update? Um, but something we can add, I think a little easier on LinkedIn than on a resume is uh, professional development. So did you take a class? Did you go to a seminar? Did you go to a conference? Um, have you um, taken something where you've learned new skills or just studied yourself to get those? Did you get an award? Right. Um, so think about what are the things um, that you can add uh, on LinkedIn because you can add kind of one off things with those. Review your contacts. So your connections on LinkedIn. Is there anyone you've met this year that you didn't add? on LinkedIn, and you should. Um, you can actually look at your email <laughs> and see if there's people that you were emailing with that you're like, oh, I never added them on LinkedIn. Uh, you could take a look at the events that you went to. Did you get business cards or just kind of take a look at the attendance? Um, are there any people at your company, maybe new people or just people new to you, people you've started to work with that you're like, oh, yeah, they would be great to add on LinkedIn. You don't necessarily have to be super close friends with someone to add them on LinkedIn, just some sort of professional connection to them. This is one that I think we forget about. And part of the, that's because LinkedIn has really upped its game in this area. And that is to review and or add and or remove <laughs> multimedia links. So uh, you can actually add websites, you can add documents, you know, you can add um, slide shares or PowerPoint presentations to your LinkedIn. So if you want to update or add those, this is the time to do it. So, you know, if you did a big project or again, you maybe um, uh, like something that isn't even necessarily work related. I think we kind of talked about that. Like it could be something again, your um, volunteer thing that you did or you're um, in charge of this 
you know, again, group for your hobby, but you guys raise money for this thing, whatever it is, that is something that you can add. And certainly you could add in marketing materials. You could add in, you know, um, images from the event, right? Anything like that, I think is always really impressive looking on your um, LinkedIn profile. The other thing, and I didn't put this in my notes, but I was just remembering is your featured items. So that's something slightly newer with LinkedIn where you can take uh, posts that you've done or you could create a post um, and actually feature it. So if you wrote an article for something or again, there was an event and there was maybe something published about it or you publish something about it, right? Um, You can feature that. Um, Some people will put their resume on LinkedIn and then actually feature it in there. I'm always a little hesitant about that because we always want to customize our resume for the job that we're looking for. Um, but you can, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely something um, that people do. Last thing, keep connected to your existing contacts, right? This is the, t- <laughs> the chance to um, not only add new ones, but hey, keep that connection going because this is a perfect time to send people messages and it's not weird, right? Like you can send out the like, hey, you know, happy holidays or happy new year, you know, just something where you're saying hi, maybe share an update or, you know, give them kind of that that just warm message. We don't want to pressure them for a response though. I mean, unless it's somebody that again, that you kind of know maybe a little bit better than maybe you could ask them like, hey, how was your year or something like that. But otherwise, honestly, you don't have to say that. You can just say, hey, just wanted to drop you a note, say Happy New Year. And, uh, you know, here's something that's maybe happened to me or or if you want, um, you know, and just just thinking of you. And then that's it. (laughs) And then the hope and the likelihood is that they're going to respond to you. Um, And so this way, if you've spent all this time networking with people and you've worked so hard to do that, this is a great way to kind of keep those connections going with a little effort. You know, so um, you don't need to do this for all of your contacts. I would, (laughs) it could be a lot, Um, but I would pick strategic ones. So maybe some newer ones, ones that you feel like might be the most helpful to you professionally right now. So that was a lot. How are we doing? Questions, (laughs) things to add, what did I miss? No, those are great (laughs) ideas. I I love the last one, especially because, you know, sometimes you lose, lose touch with people, right? Yes. So it is a very, it's just, a, hey, happy holidays. You know, it's very casual, but you're still able to kind of update them about what's going on with your life. And I love that. That's a, I've never thought of that before. So, yeah, well, it's, it's something that I haven't done myself, but <laughs> I am now like, yes, mm-hmm. I should do that. Well, I think it's all great information. I just want to add one note, even though we're talking about it as like end of the year, we're updating LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. If you're not there, create one at this point. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Yep. Again, we are here to to help with that if you need it. Um, LinkedIn itself, though, is pretty straight. They walk you through it. It's pretty straightforward. Like if you go in there just to create an account, it will walk you through it. Um, It's it's not too bad. Um, I do think it helps to update your resume first. Mm-hmm. And then work on either creating or updating your LinkedIn um, and actually having that um, those stories ready too, uh, because all of that will help um, to then just make it pretty easy to update your LinkedIn. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for all that great information on LinkedIn, Rebecca. And as we get set to wrap up here, I do want to answer our listener mail question. And it's, I'm looking for a new opportunity, but with the holiday season approaching, should I keep looking or wait until after the new year? And I think we get this quite often. And we hear this for a couple of reasons, I think. The first is because the hiring process does seem to slow down. um, But we also uh, get this, I think, just because people are feeling drained um, from the time of year, um, you know, they just need some permission to slow down. Right. They know that they should be searching for a job, but they don't feel like they can keep up with it and they need that permission. So on that note, I want to give you permission to take care of yourself. If you're going through that job search and you have all this other stuff going on and you're just feeling exhausted, remember, you want to prioritize your own well-being. With that said, if you're feeling healthy and well, never suspend your job search. 
Yes, during this time of year, some employers may slow down. They may not be responding as quickly, but other job seekers will also slow down. They won't be looking for these opportunities, which can create great opportunities for you to stand out. So during this holiday season, keep an eye out for new opportunities and keep networking so you can take advantage of opportunities as they develop. And I want to mention, too, is that uh, some employers need to get things hired before the end of the year for budget reasons. So you might be surprised. You know, again, a lot of employers, like you said, they'll slow down, but some are like desperate. They're like, oh, I need to get this filled. Yeah. So, again, as long as you're feeling healthy and well, continue that search. Don't hold off. And if you have a question that you want to be asking, remember, you can submit it at the career podcast at cod.edu or on social media at COD Career Center. Well, thank you so much to all of our listeners. We hope you had a great year and enjoyed the first season of the Career Ready Podcast. As we enter winter break, we will still have content for you so you can learn a little more about the people behind the voices. Uh, Stay warm, stay motivated, and most important of all, take care of yourself and those around you.